Welcome back again, family. Again, you are listening to Confessions with Brian T. Bethia on WJHM 102 Jams. Again, we are back with our guest, our special guest in the building, of course, the author of The Making of a Blended Family and pastor of Christian Family Worship Center, uh, Mr. J- uh, Jerry Q. Perry. Welcome back again. Thank you. Glad to be here, man. Okay. And again, we've been talking about blended families and, uh, of course, the making of a blended family for those of y'all that uh, have are dealing with um, marrying somebody that ha- already has children and things of that nature. We've talked quite a lot. One thing that really caught me off, um, not really caught me off guard, I shouldn't say that, but one, really that, one chapter that really caught me uh, caught my, my, my um, attention was Cinderella Syndrome. Uh, can you explain what Cinderella Syndrome is? Yeah, Cinderella, uh, Cinderella Syndrome is a story about Cinderella. Cinderella is the stepchild, you know. And sometimes in a blended family, um, we can make uh, the stepchildren for, we don't call them stepchildren, by the way, in blended families. Right. We call them bonus kids, a bonus child. Um, a stepchild has such, to me, a, a negative connotation. So I use the word bon- my bonus son. My, so when someone says, well, who is this? And I'm introducing them, I would say, right. uh, first of all, I say it's my child. I don't even use bonus. That, that is my child. And then in the event that I have to clarify it, I'm at the Social Security office or whatever, then I say, this is my bonus child. This is my uh, bonus child. Um, But in the Cinderella syndrome, um, when you don't have your own biological children, Mm -hmm. you have a tendency to be harder on your bonus children than you are on your biological children. Right. You let your biological children go to bed without washing the dishes, but you make the Cinderella child scrub the floor, clean the kitchen, clean the, clean the, the, the bathroom, <laughs> and, and, and then they begin to have a resentment for you, the bonus parent, because they can tell that you are you have a difference in the way that you treat me versus you treat yeah. your own biological child. Right. Um, problem in our in our in our blended family growing up, and 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 those residual moments have a tendency to flood over into adulthood. And again, a lot of times it is not how you treat the child. It's the perception of how the child feels you treat them. And you can do something and be fair across the board. But if their perception is that you have not been fair, then it comes back that 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 becomes damaging for them. So you got to make sure. And one of the ways that I talk about in the Cinderella syndrome, one of the ways to to make sure that you don't have this problem is to put up a schedule. In the, in the kitchen to say, on Monday, John does the dishes. On Tuesday, Ray does the dishes. On Wednesday, Sarah does the dishes. And when people could see in writing that it is even across the board, that takes away the perception that I'm being mistreated and they're getting away with this and I'm not getting away with that. Well, I like that. I like that. Um, how, how difficult was that in your particular household, getting them, getting them to understand that? Or was it not that difficult at all? Oh, very difficult. Very challenging. When you have children from different parents, it is it is a dynamic that's automatically there. Um, biological children go to their biological parent to plead their case. One of the things that we did to help our children is that I w- we would we would try, uh, you know, after or later that if if my if my b- bonus daughter wanted something and her mother said no. I would go back and talk to her mother and allow me to come out and give her what she wants so that it would make her know that I was an advocate for her. Gotcha. Instead of me being the person that said no, 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 because when your biological, uh, your bonus children come to you and it's uh, 10 o'clock at night, hey, can I have a fruit snack? No, go to bed. You know, yeah, yeah, go to bed. You know, don't, no, you can't have one. But then your, your biological son come and say, hey, mom, I want a fruit snack. Well, hey, you can have one. And when your bonus child see you do that, mm-hmm. you got problems. And so we try to had to try to figure out a way uh, to make sure that we made it even across the board. Okay, was that something that you had to literally sit them sit them down and talk with them that, or was that, or was that something that you just had to just take practice in order to get them to to see that? We had to do both. We had to do both. We had to talk. We had to sit them down. We had to share. Uh, 
we had to do it. We just kept doing it over and over again. And, and again, like I said, some of that even passes over uh, for some of them even today. Mm, okay. Now, in regards, you know, excuse me, in regards to that, I know you talked about uh, in the book in terms of joining the family together, and I remember there was a, a specific situation. Um, you know, how do you deal with those where those family members who bring repeated people or people that they dated into the family and, you know, making sure that di that dynamic works as well, if you know what, if you know what I'm saying. Like, maybe if they if uh, one marriage didn't work, then they, uh, they brought in another, the next wife. Uh, right. You know, that type of thing. Is that? Right, right. Um, yeah, I, I, I talked about that, that, that sometime, and this is for the, the, the spouse or um, if, if, I, if I bring my wife around my family, mm -hmm. if I bring my wife around my family and I've had four other girlfriends prior to bringing my wife around my family, then my family may not receive my wife very well because they would see her as just another person I'm bringing around and she'll be gone in the next few minutes. Right. And so some families or some women uh, uh, my wife would be offended that my family did not receive her, but it has nothing to do with my wife. It has everything to do with my choices. And so they, in return, feel the negativity of the choices that I made. Right. And, and so I encourage women not to, uh, when those things happen, don't take it personally. It's not against you. It's really about the mate who you are with, that, that the... Um, uh, the discussion or the, you know, the, the, the thing is about. There's also an aspect sometimes, because I know a lot of times with in-laws, you know, sometimes the biological family can have a, um, a favorite, so to speak. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, well, oh, oh, that, that, yeah, because when you bring somebody into my home mm -hmm. and I gain a relationship with them, right. when you mess up with them doesn't mean that I still don't have a relationship <laughs> with them. Right. And then sometimes they want you to cut the relationship because they cut the relationship. Then they bring a new person in and expect you to forsake the person that you've gained a relationship with and with the child. It's welcome to the blended family. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's tough for, um, for for a lot of people, but I know you said you talked about that in the book yes. a little bit. You know, you know, it's kind of hard to deal with um, things where you know the, the the family has already gotten used to. You know those particular, um, you know that particular family member, and they love that particular. I know my family is the same way. Absolutely. Um, you know where you know we got used to not just used to them, but we actually loved and loved on the you know, on the family member, the, the in law, what have you. And in a lot of in a lot of cases, my family is like that. The biological family member died, but that in law family member stayed family till death did they part as well. Yes. Uh, so and I know that can sometimes play a, a family dynamic um, also. Uh, is there has, were there any cases or how not well if you can give an example if you have one on, on your end, uh, but specifically how can you what what about the issue where the child or the children try to play one parent against the other? You know what I'm saying? Especially whether it be uh, the bonus parent and the the um the you know and one of the biological parents in that regard or I mean or either it could be the case where the you know they live with the biological parent and the bonus parent and they still try to play one parent against the other well uh but see that that playing one parent against another happens in traditional families you know if 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 a, a child goes to whoever they can get what they want they they're not they're not necessarily playing that children do not, in my opinion, mm -hmm. do not think that intricate. What they think about is what they want and they find the person who can give them what they want. And in the process of that, if that's going to the father and, or going to the mother, they go to get what they want. Um, and so what ends up happening in a blended family, you have a husband and a wife, bonus dad, bonus mom, and end up that the, the children is just going to the person who's favored them to give them what they want. And, it, and, and sometimes that uh, if I ask my bonus dad for something, he says no. Then I go to my biological mother. She said yes. I, you know, I, I didn't, I'm not disrespecting my bonus father from the I am, but that's not my intention. Right. My intention is to get what I want. 
Right. And it just so happened to be disrespectful. But I am not thinking the whole disrespectful piece. I am thinking about I want this for what I want. Gotcha. You know. Okay. Now, and I've, I definitely wanted to talk this next subject. That um, next subject I thought about, and I've heard I hear this sometimes. But when it comes to blended families, who should do the the discipline or the uh, the physical? Well, specifically the physical disciplining, and what what kind of discipline can the bonus parent do, if any at all? Wow, this is a topic that I really wanted to spend quite a bit of time on. Um, who should do the discipline is um, a major, major, major piece. Um, I like to do this, if you don't mind. Uh, um, I think we're coming back next week. Yeah. I, I like to hold that to 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 absolutely to next week. I think you should. I think you should tune in to hear who should do the discipline because if if you get this wrong, mm -hmm. um, this can really destroy your family. And, and so I really want you to uh, really listen to what I have to share in that matter. Okay. And all right. Yeah, definitely. We wanted to make sure that we did bring that up because I know that's been an issue for quite a few uh, parents and, and whatnot in that regard. Um, because, you know, you never know. I know that's a, that's a hard issue. I understand some people talk about, um, you know, yeah, they would let the bonus parent, you know, do the physical disciplining. Uh, but, again, like, you know, it's, it's a hard subject you know, to want to, you know, talk about for some people. So what we will do, we will definitely talk about that uh, on the on Thursday show uh, as well. Um, in the meantime, what we are going to do, we're still going to continue with uh, a little bit on and uh, come back with a, uh, not just the climax, but somewhat a, a little wrap up or what have you um, in terms of the interview for today's show. Uh, so definitely you want to definitely stay tuned to Confessions with Brian T. Bethia. And remember, please download the app on your Android. All right? Download that app on your Android. Again, WJHM102Jams.com for all you Android users. All right? We'll be 